Ethane. A Hayden. Ethane claims that the right side fire was started by three FA men, one of whom was the FA leader, Hines. Can Hines have started the fire? No. Why couldn't Hines have started the fire? Because he was in a far town of Gleewitz. Who was with Hines in Gleewitz on the night of the fire? He was standing there. Did anyone else in Gleewitz see Hines on the night of the fire? The nurses of his children. What was Hines doing on the night of the fire? He was giving a speech to follow the, the Nazi party. Thank you very much. What is your job? I am a lawyer. And where do you work? In Berlin. Do you know what happens to the people that um, go against the Nazis? Yes. So is it true that if you were a weak man, not saying that you are, you might be frightened to say anything else? I don't view why not. Is the Nazi government brilliant at propaganda? I wouldn't say they were brilliant, but I would say propaganda plays the most big part in their so is it possible that you, they could have made up information about the public meeting? I don't see why they should, because they are innocent. Were you there at that meeting? No. If the Nazis made up a story about a public meeting, would anyone in Germany have dared come, um, to speak up? Why should they make up evidence? They don't need to. I'm not saying they make up evidence. Thank you. What's your name? I am in Roth. What was the right side and roof made of? It was made of glass. When it broke, how did this help to make the fire much worse? Well, the race was broke. It caused a large updraft, which then led to the flames sweeping through the whole building. So it is true that a little fire might have got out of control very quickly. Uh -huh. So would such a fire have needed a lot of petrol and chemicals to start it? No. What is your job? I am a fireman. So you do know what you're talking about? Of course I do. It wouldn't be up here if I didn't. Do you know more about fires than, say, a journalist? I think you already know the answer to that question, and therefore I don't see any relevance in you asking. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Oh, fireman of Berlin, correct? Yes, I am. Who gave you a job? Um, I don't see any point in that question at all. Okay, were you asked by the Nazis to um, give this testimony at the trial for Vandaloo? I'd like to take it my step. Thank you very much. So you weren't asked at all to come there? You just came voluntarily? Mm, uh huh. If you do not say this, is it possible that um, you might lose your job? <laughs> not to my knowledge. What's your name? Herr Winger. Herr Winger, could the Nazis have started the fire? No. Was there an underground tunnel to the right side building? Yes. So why couldn't the Nazis gone along the underground tunnel? Because there were many locked doors in that tunnel. After the fire, were any of the doors found open? No. What is your job? I'm a locksmith. So you do know what you're talking about? I do, yes. No. Who asked you to say it then? No one. So you just voluntarily came up here? Mm-hmm. Um, do you know what happens to people who go against Hitler in the room? Yeah. Now, you say all the doors in the tunnel were locked. Mm -hmm. Presumably this is because the last person went through them with a key and locked them. If you can find no way of doing that, then I like here. So if an essay man had a key, could he have locked them after he had gone through? He could, potentially. But I don't really see how one SA man could have gone through, started fires, came back, locked all the doors behind him without leaving any evidence there. Who else would have gone through? I don't know. your name? Stephen Dummer. On the night of the fire, who did Hitler think had started the fire? He wasn't sure. What did Hitler say? He said he hoped it was the communists. Why did Hitler want the fire to have been started by communists? It would have given further proof that the communists are a threat to Germany and thus need to be banned. Did Hitler seem excited by the idea that the communists started the fire? Not overly excited. Where were you on the night of the fire? With Hitler and the other Nazi leaders. Did you see Hitler behave like this with your own eyes? Yes. Does what you saw, how Hitler behaved, fit with the theory that Hitler has started the fire? Not at all. What is your job? I'm a journalist with the Daily Express. Is the Daily Express the most important newspaper in the world? We like to think so. But it's not. I suppose not. Okay, do you not think it was strange that Hitler on such an important occasion was with you, a foreign journalist, instead of being with the chief of police? Or? He wasn't solely with me, he was with the other national leaders as well. So Goran and Goebbels were there as well? Yes. Um, when you see a film of an actor playing Hitler, is the actor playing to be angry, surprised, or is he just acting? Is that relevant? If it's an actor, he should be acting. Is it not possible that Hitler could be acting? Doubtful. Hmm. Is it possible that Hitler was acting like this just to give, so that you would go away and write an article? If he were, I'm sure he would have had much more press. Did you write the story? 1959. The fire happened in 1933. How many years ago between 1933 and 1959? Uh, about 26. 
Who's in that hospital within 26 years who may have forgotten what really happened? I'm not that old. My memory is still... Okay, then, can you tell me what Hitler was wearing? He was wearing his normal suit, a green jacket and green pants. Can you remember what you ate that night? I don't think I had dinner that night. I was quite caught up in the moment. And can you remember what you had for breakfast? I had eggs and ham. Can you remember exactly how what you talked about with Hitler? Yes, he told me that it might be the communists, and he hoped it to be. For them, this would give further evidence that they should be back. Gentlemen of the jury, the issue of who started the rice that fire has been laid upon you, and it's your job to judge it fairly, so that our children who read about it from textbooks can know the truth once and for all. I'm not saying that this issue is easy for you to judge, but you must make your decisions fairly. This afternoon, diverse arguments have come up, so bring one way or another. William Shearer was an American journalist living in Germany at the time, and he claimed it was impossible for a mentally challenged Vandaloo to start such an enormous fire with merely a shirt and a few matches. And he was saying that he did. Do you now think, ask yourself why? And how? How can someone be allowed in the Reichstag? Are all three people allowed in the Reichstag? Are all people, um, if they were all allowed in the Reichstag, would not all other three people be in there? Now, ladies and gentlemen, something seems wrong with Mother Lou's confession. It appears to me, based on the fact we have looked at this afternoon, they could not have been alone, not only because the fire was way too big for him to stop, but also because there was no other way for him to get in unless someone helped him in. Unless the defense is suggesting that Mother Lou entered by some other means, like climbing outside the building, before breaking a window and starting a fire. But surely someone would have seen him. Surely security would have stopped him. Perhaps the defense is implying that he entered by other means, again, but now we're running low. As established, it's very cold. Um, there was an underground tunnel with many locked doors. But since the door was locked, found that they couldn't have used them, he would have had keys in his pocket. Ladies and gentlemen, it is absolutely impossible for Van der Leeuwen to enter the right step without the help. So, it seems probable, more probable in fact, that the SA members accessed the right step to the tunnel, started the fire, then left very where they entered, remembering to lock the door, and leaving Van der Leeuwen trapped inside so that he could get the blame, knowing all too well he was too slow to say it, to protest. He was tricked just like Arthur Costa has testified today. Carl Lance was an SA man who was killed after the fire, and no one knows quite why. It is impossible for us to find out why is, as well, since he was killed and is unable to talk. But it does not seem possible that he could have been killed. Um, he could have been killed when he appeared he might be able to talk. Her rationing claims that his, um, Goring told him that his men went to the right side and set on fire. And he heard General Franz Halder claim that Goring set up the fire himself. The court has no proof to say that these men are lying. So why not believe them? We know the people. We know what kind of people the Nazis are. They bullied and killed those who disagreed with them. And we know what kind of person Hitler was. A hungry, power-hungry, violent, selfish man who was prepared to do whatever he could to get, to, whatever, to get power like he did with the Munich push. All the defense witnesses here today were terrified for their lives. They all have families to feed, their jobs to keep. Dr. Sack was paid even though he tries to deny it. Why, could the Na why would the Nazis have to pay someone unless they had something to hide? And how can you blame them? Wouldn't we all be if we were in their case? Dustin Dahmer claims that he was um, with the fur on the dramatic night. Doesn't that seem odd? A journalist from a new foreign newspaper with Hitler. Seems too coincidental. It seems like Hitler planned it. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the task of judging such an event is difficult since the truth lies somewhere buried in this web of bias, bribery, hearsay, and fear. Think long and hard before you come to your decision. Remember, you may be the jury for this, but history will be the judge for you. I spoke at the beginning of this trial. I spoke of the truth. I hold that up to you again, ladies and gentlemen. The truth of modern times is based on facts and proof. And during the cross-examining of witnesses today, we have seen hard, concrete proof that the Nazis could not have set this fire. One of the people accused of this barbaric act has a foolproof alibi at the time of the fire. And we have a reliable statement from a reliable, non-political man accomplished in his particular career, that it was impossible for members of the Nazi party to have passed through underground tunnels to the Reichstag. William Shearer was simply a journalist living in Germany. His only claim to coming up here and pointing out evidence against the Nazis was that he lived in Germany. He had no inside knowledge. He had no secret know-how into the workings of the Nazi party. This is ridiculous. A large portion of the witnesses for the prosecution are openly anti-Nazi. They would be delighted, I'm sure, to see this party falsely accused of this crime, whereas we search only for the truth of the matter. This is more important than politics, ladies and gentlemen. This is more than petty party rivalry. Today is the time to search for the important things in life and forget the bias and prejudice so rampant all over Germany. 
Forget your own political opinions here, whatever they may be, and don't think of this as a faceless party being put to trial, that innocent men who have done no harm and wish only to save Germany from the terrifying maniacs or maniacs who committed this crime. If you, the jury, choose to see the truth in this trial, it shall be a triumph for Germany. We shall take the flames of the tragically burned Reichstag and use them to light the way to a freer, more true Germany.